Good morning guys. Hadn't expected to shoot a video this morning, but we have an unwelcome visitor. I did want to show you that. This is one of our chicken shelters. Let me get down in here. Out of the light. Look at that dude. Now obviously I can't shoot that guy in that uh, shelter. I'd blow a hole through the back of the shelter. But you know what? That's just an old rat snake. And he's got a uh, purpose out here on the farm in the middle of uh, the ecosystem. Certainly not in the middle of my uh, chicken coop, my chicken shelter here eating eggs. But he does have a purpose. So we're going to remove that joker. We're going to release that joker quite a ways away from uh, the chicken coops here. So try not to laugh too hard. We'll see what happens. This set of the snake tongs, we keep these by the back door. I'm going to tell you more about this uh, after we get this joker removed. But just basic uh, 40 inch set. If you live out on a farm or out on a homestead and you live in snake territory, you better have a set of these. This uh, particular snake is not venomous, but that's not always the case, and you're not always able to. Uh, you're not always able to get them out without uh, using snake tongs. You can't uh, shoot a hole in everything, guys. So let's get this guy out. I'm gonna pull him out. I'll get control of his head. Then I'll get a. Then I'll get a good uh, grip on him. We're gonna take him out into the woods. You can see why I use the 40 inch because this snake even at this length he's not going to come back and be able to get me. Oh, look at him. He's a beaut, isn't he? Okay, enough of Steve Irwin. You want to make sure that you don't uh, grab them too tight with those snake tongs. You'll actually uh, break ribs, that sort of thing. But if you get a hold of their head, they're not going anywhere. Now, these jokers do have teeth, so you don't want him to bite. You'll get a uh, wound full of infection, bacteria. But as long as you got a hold of him, he's not going anywhere. Let's uh, take him out back, and we're going to release him. Before we released him, I wanted to show you a pattern and also see how I've got a hold of this guy. I'm not hurting him at all, but he's not going anywhere. Just show you what the bottom side looks like. Again, what the top side looks like. This is a non-venomous. You know, they, like I said, they have a uh, good use in ecology, good use in the ecosystem here, but just not in my hen house. As you can see, we're out here in the meadow, in our hidden meadow, out on the edge of uh, some other woods. Let's let's uh, release this guy. I'm sure he's tired of uh, the human interaction right now. Got him? Yep. And there he goes. Well, as you can see, no snakes were harmed in the making of this video. But I just wanted to uh, do this quick little short gig just to show you that uh, not all snakes are bad. There actually are some good snakes. Not every snake deserves to die. Some snakes uh, certainly have their, have their role. 
None of the snakes have a role in my chicken house though or underneath the shelter eating eggs. But we are going to relocate those. They're going to help keep that rodent population down out here. And he's going to continue to do his own thing and live a long and happy life. Well that was kind of an exciting morning being able to uh, turn that guy loose. I want to talk a little bit more about these snake tongs. I was actually going to do this in another video but uh, this seems like a pretty good time as any. We literally keep these by our back door because like I was saying earlier, you don't know if you're going to run across a venomous snake or a non-venomous snake. We've got a lot of copperheads out here. We do have a few pygmy rattlers. So sometimes tongs are the way to go. And even as you saw pulling uh, that one snake out, I wasn't going to put my hand down there in striking distance. They do have teeth. You can get a uh, handful of bacteria. That's no good. So I use these to get the snake out where I can uh, control it. Now this particular brand is made by Midwest. This isn't a paid advertisement. I'm showing you what I use. I'm gonna tell you why I use these. This is the brand that most zoos use. It's made out of a durable aluminum. If you had a, a rattlesnake on the end of this joker, you don't want that thing to break midway down. It's gonna bite your leg or whatever. You don't wanna fail. You wanna be sure you've got a good grip, grip on it. So that's why I use these. These are a uh, tried and true, been used, uh, for years in zoos like say so this is what we use out here I want to keep me safe I want to keep the family safe now why do I choose a 40 inch I somewhat showed you before I didn't have a good uh, hold on that snake that's uh, trying to do things for the camera instead of paying attention to what I was doing it's where also a lot of accidents happen but if you're holding that snake properly about midway in the middle of these grips at 40 inches, most snakes, even if they do come, try to uh, come back up the pole, won't have enough length to uh, be able to come back, strike your hand, strike your arm. You just don't want to hold on to the pole like this. Because you get a, uh, a pretty long snake on there, they actually do weigh a lot. So holding, maintaining a positive hold on this guy when you got a lot of weight out there, wiggling weight on the end, you know, you don't want something shorter certainly wouldn't want anything longer nothing longer in my opinion they do make these longer they make them 52 64 72 inches but like I say mine's a 40 inch but I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you this tool it's just another tool on the homestead you know it's just as important as the rakes as the hose as the chainsaw whatever you use so uh, if you haven't bought one of these you don't have one of these this will certainly be a good investment to have it'll, it'll uh, certainly keep you safe one of the other things I do want to point out uh, real quick, let me get up here so you can see the actual holding device. This portion, this red portion, is actually covered in a uh, rubber. does two things that uh, helps protect the snake from damage, but with it being rubber, it'll also help hold the snake. This end is flat. There's no ridges or anything. Because a lot of the snakes we don't want to hurt, but at the same time you can hold on to them uh, pretty tightly. It does have a hook that will embed inside that area so you can get a good tight grip. And when you are holding on to a snake, although they will flatten out, don't put uh, your hulk grip on here because it's certainly a snake that you're trying to release because you will break its ribs. They, they do break, um, contrary to popular belief. So just get a good enough grip on this that you're going to hold hold it snugly, but it's not going to be able to uh, get out of the grasp. As you saw, I got when I got it out of that coop, I maintained a positive control of the head with the hook side. I got a hold of the tail. I started walking backwards. Most times, that's the best way to uh, manage a snake, especially a snake that size. It's a little bit harder for it to turn around and strike you. And then, as you noticed, I moved this up forward from uh, where I had it uh, about midway of the snake. Then I was able to reach down and get uh, positive control of that head. Now, of course, if you're uh, uncomfortable messing with snakes, you know, I wouldn't uh, suggest it right away or maybe even get a rubber snake to kind of practice uh, your technique. You know, some of the key things to think about. You use your, uh, you know, be smart about it when you're handling a snake, just like all wild animals. You know, they can bite, they can cause damage, especially a venomous one. But I just want to let you know that not all snakes are venomous, not all snakes are bad. And again, this is a super tool to have in your in your arsenal, in your tool shed. Or like I say, our back it's literally on the hand railing at our back door, so we know exactly where it's at. 
But it's great to use one of these things to get uh, snakes out of your egg boxes, nest boxes, or where it's not uh, safe for you to just reach in and grab with your hand. So anyway, with all that uh, being said, this is just a short little video. Hadn't expected uh, to make one today, but when opportunity arises, you take advantage of it. Certainly appreciate you guys, and until next time, we'll see you next video.